Hey, what's going on everyone? Veggie here for Serpent X Tech and it's time for our monthly series of what it, it would cost to build a mining rig right now in the current market conditions with current GPU pricing. Now GPU pricing has gotten better and I know quite a few of you would rather buy new GPUs than get second hand. Now I have no problem buying second hand but I always make sure to ask the right questions to make sure that I'm buying a working GPU from the seller. However, a lot of people like to buy broken GPUs because it might be an easy fix to get the GPU up and running and you might save some money. This month, not only do I have an older generation AMD GPU that we're gonna be utilizing, but we're gonna go over the full parts list, which will be linked down in the description as well as profitability. So if you like content like this, make sure to hit that like button and get subscribed. So the older generation GPU that I chose for this month is the RX 5600 XT. Pretty good GPU, no longer produced by AMD right now. Um, and the pricing, depending on where you get it, um, is going to be comparable to the 6600 XT. Now we know the 6600 XT can get about 30, 32 mega hash, um, and it's about the same price, around $400. And I have priced the 5600 XT around that same price, even though on eBay, like for this one right here, we could get for 340. Obviously, with no fans or shroud, next one down has a missing fan for 350. And next one down has a single fan, which I don't recommend if you're in a warm climate or mining tent or a type of environment because, you know, those single fan cards don't really cool all that well, especially the coolers are very cheaply made. Uh, but there are brands out there that are reputable and, and gets the job done. I love the Sapphire Pulse. I love Power Colors. Uh, what is it? The Red Devils. Uh, those cards are pretty good. Gigabyte has a few issues. But you can see as we go down the list, they're around 400 bucks. And here's the Red Devil model that I particularly like. So 400 bucks, competing with the 6600 XT. But this thing does have one advantage. First off, Amazon also has a card, Sapphire Pulse. I don't suppose this if this video goes up or even before then, that somebody might get this uh, 5600 XT, even though it's been renewed for 400 bucks, because the next one's up is going to be 500 plus. So it really just depends on when you're looking at this video. Secondhand market, when you try to search the 5600 XT on Google, you're going to see nothing but 6600 XTs or 6600s or 6500s. Just really depends on when you're searching. But the secret weapon is, we know from many of our favorite content creators and a number of testing environments, that we can mem mod this GP with the red BIOS editor. You can make some tweaks, not only cutting down the amount of power draw, right? Bringing down the power draw instead of the 100 watts or 90 watts that many have gotten down to almost 55, 60 watts and still getting 43 mega hash. So that's well above what the 6600 XT uh, and a 6600 can do. So the secret weapon is that we can modify it, whereas the AMD 6000 series is a little bit more locked down. Right now for the system build, here are all the parts that I have. As I mentioned, everything will be linked down in the description. But we went with the Intel Celeron G5900. Simple dual core processor. These processors were actually quite up during the mining craze and has since calmed down. This is the LGA 1200 socket type CPU. 40 bucks, can't go wrong. Then we chose the Asus Prime H510M-E micro ATX motherboard. Uh, it's 82 bucks. You could find one a little bit cheaper. The reason I wanted to get this board instead, though, is because it has two uh, PCIe by one slots on top of the by 16 and an M.2. So plenty of room to use an adapter and be able to connect up the cards because we're getting eight of these GPUs. Now, memory, uh, we could have, you know, bought two memory sticks. Uh, for 20 bucks each, but there was a deal going on with, again with the G Skill Aegis 8 gigabyte 2x4 stick, um, 4 gigabyte sticks uh, at DDR4 2400 megahertz. Um, and then the SSD, I went with my tried and true option, but the reason I chose the 120 gig instead of the 240 is because uh, Hive is a great option. You don't really need that much storage if you're going to install Hive on your SSD, whereas on Windows, you might want to get that extra headroom and stuff like that. Uh, at least 240. Uh, 240 gigabytes for Windows and then 60 gigabytes or around 60 or more for a Linux distribution mining application or OS. Uh, then, you know, I, of course, I have 3200 here. So that's basically eight uh, times $400. 3200 will get us six of these GPUs. You could, again, save money depending on when you're looking at the secondhand market, sniping good deals at a good time. Uh, you can absolutely get eight of these GPUs 
and keep the budget below overall four thousand dollars now seasonic prime gold 1300 watt power supply the reason i chose this is because the stock tdp of these cards is 150 watts even though you're not going to be running at that you always want to be prepared for the worst case scenario drivers fail which amd drivers do happen to fail quite often especially if your overclocks too high too low uh you're undervolting too much and over time as the silicon degrades you need more voltage to maintain that those same clocks that you had so as time goes on you're going to need more and more power to maintain those clocks so right now 150 watts uh stock times eight it's about 200 watts so the seasonic 1300 watts are going to be close to the maximum that that particular atx power supply can do but with tuning it will be down you know just 90 watts which is you know we can get a lot lower than that 55 60 65 watts per gpu um, but at you know 90 watts 720 well within the means and capabilities of this power supply and then just threw a five pack of arctic p8 fans on there uh, make sure you get the four pin pwm don't be like me and get the three pin dc but right now with this current build parts list we're sitting at 3600 dollars or around that but we need a few extra things um, obviously we're going to need uh i want you to consider excuse me i want you to consider you know, getting the server power supply from Parallel Miner rather than the ATX power supply. Now, it's nothing against Seasonic. The ATX power supply can get the job done. Just be mindful, um, like in the video um, linked in the description of how to power your, your mining rig, that, that even though that one strand, that ATX modular cable that you just plugged into the Seasonic power supply has maybe two 6 plus 2 pins or three 6 plus 2 pins, that entire strand is only rated for so much. Uh, 216 on a 6 pin uh 288 on an 8 pin so if you're going to be splitting out those connections which you will do to not only power your risers but your gpus that you're just mindful of the capabilities of your power supply parallel miners and server power supplies are rated up to 1200 watts but on a 220 or 240 volt system rather than uh you know 750 watts on a 110 system so pick and choose your battle for your conditions your electrical your wiring and you know you can just use the zsx breakout board um, and a server power supply to power your your motherboard and everything you need including your gpus if you're only on 110 you might need to get two of these otherwise the server power supply will work just fine because these are more adaptable to the situation you know if you're on 110 120 220 240 whatever it may be so just get what's best for you and always take into account the different um items or, that are on that circuit right if you got an air fryer oven blow dryer whatever whatever you're plugging your your mining rig into be mindful of those other items that are on that shared circuit moving on we got a case now i always recommend building your own case if possible go to your nearest your nearest hardware store like ace lowe's home depot whatever or just get you know go to walmart sam's club whatever you got get those uh metal metal shelves and 3d printed brackets and you know just hang the gpus if you so like that gives you more room to add more gpus per shelf depending on how many tiers you get otherwise you can pick one up for under 50 bucks a gpu frame basic not stackable which is the biggest downside or a server case will work just fine which if you do get a server case you won't need these type of risers right so uh, I like Feb Smart, I like Ubit, um, different risers out there for different purposes. They're a little bit cheaper, right? This Ubit six pack is only 35 bucks versus a continuous 45 to 50 bucks is what we were seeing before. Otherwise, you can get some really high end quality risers from GPRisers.com. Make sure to check them out as well. Uh, a lot of the content creators rather prefer these GP risers because they're a little bit more, much more higher quality, have higher quality components on these risers but the Amazon risers will help you get the job done. Uh, of course, you're gonna need to split out your connections. So we got all kinds of adapters and splitters. Uh, just again, be mindful of what you're splitting and how many watts, if you're trying to power two GPUs, three GPUs, with one splitter, just be mindful of it, especially when you're powering the riser and the GPU. Um, I just don't want you to have any issues. Again, these these splitters and most power cables will not only not fail where the wire on, because of the wiring, but where the pinout connects to their various connectors. Um, of course, with this motherboard, we're going to have to split out the connection. Uh, let me, let's go to Newegg real quick. If we look at the motherboard, again, we have two by one and one by 16 and then an M.2 slot. So we got plenty of room to split out these connections, which is why, you know, two of these uh, adapters, forward by one adapters will work. You plug both of those into your by one connection. You can even get a ninth GPU um, and plug it in if you really wanted to. Uh, just be mindful 
the CPU is what determines the lanes that that motherboard is going to be able to. Because this is a low-end motherboard, you don't have that chipset to fall back on. But because you're connecting via by one connections, you should be perfectly fine with eight GPUs. Just don't expect to add 12, 14, 18 GPUs on this one particular motherboard. And then, of course, if you do need the extra M.2 slot to split out a connection and get an extra GPU on there, you can do that with one of these adapters, again, linked in the description. Now, let's move on to profitability. The 5600 XT right now, at time of filming, is making around $13 a day, really $11 after profit. Now, because this card is in the same price range as the 6600 XT, uh, the 6600 XT is only making $10 a day, $9 after profit. So you're just going to want to pick and choose, you know, what are you really trying to farm? What are you really trying to focus on? Because you can see that Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Ravencoin, and Fero are the top coins on the 5600 XT, whereas on the 6600 XT, Equilibra and Fero take over those, those top two sections, conceals a little bit higher, Ethereum Classic falls down. Um, and Flux is an option on the 6600, while Flux isn't so much an option on the 5600 XT. So it really just kind of depends on what you're trying to focus on. But to build this rig for under $4,000 or around $4,000 is actually a pretty good deal. So focusing on the 5600 XT, 8 GPUs with, you know, the stock, you know, 90 watts per GPU, uh, for about 40 mega hash per GPU, not adding the extra, you know, timing and utilities that you can use to get that extra hash rate or performance uh, it would take you about 392 days to break even mining ethereum but ethereum again the merge even though it was delayed is still going to happen in the future and it's definitely going to happen within the years so you're not going to be able to mine ethereum and continue to recoup your initial investment so you're going to have to switch over to other projects the next best thing is ethereum classic right now at time of filming 612 days making an average of 8 to $6 a day after profit or after electricity. Then Ravencoin, 687 days, about 5 almost $6 a day in profit at $0.10 cent per kilowatt hour is what I'm basing my math off of. Obviously, it depends on your conditions, country, or the cost of electricity. And then for Fero, 710 days at around $6 again in profit after electricity. So it's not something that's going to get you a lot of money really quick. You're not going to mine an entire Bitcoin with this thing. But it is something to get your foot in the door. You know, $4,000 to get an 8 GPU rig up and running isn't a bad deal. But a lot of people are going to say, wouldn't you just go with a 6600 XT? Or would you just go with the 5600 XT? Again, if you can mod each one, keep the thermals good, keep the voltages good, keep the power draw down, you can do pretty good with the 5600 XT build. Um, but remember, those cards aren't as widely available as the 6600 XT hundred series or six thousand series from amd is let me know your thoughts though down in the comments below uh let me know what you would have chosen um in the four hundred dollar price range on the amd side i know nvidia is the more well-rounded um mining gpu whereas amd is mostly specialized in certain algorithms certain cryptocurrencies so on and so forth but that's gonna do it for today's video please do me a favor on the way out make sure to Hit the like button. Don't forget to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date. As well as check out links in the description to help support the channel. And uh, make sure to catch me next month for the next video of Cost to Build a Mining Rig. We'll see what we choose for the month of May. You all take care. I'll catch you next one.